For more than 60 years, Brits have been sold the dream of a new paradise life in Australia. Every year, nearly 30,000 people emigrate to Oz, and many head for the vibrant city of Sydney, attracted to the harbour lifestyle, the sunshine, and the 70-odd beaches up and down the coast. We'll join 37-year-old Claire, a self-confessed couch potato when she lived in London. She's now caught the Aussie exercise bug and is about to compete against Sydney's fittest. We'll meet animal lover Gary. So we're going to take him over here. Who's found his calling rescuing endangered native wildlife. He's angry, as he should be. And we'll follow Bondi beach lovers Alex and Grace as they face the most difficult decision of their lives. I've never seen you cry before, ever. As we discover the reality of a dream life down under. Ten miles north of central Sydney is Manly Beach, a mecca for the city's young and health conscious. It's 6am and the beachfront is a hive of activity. One of the early birds is 37-year-old Claire. She moved to Sydney seven years ago from London. Look at this beautiful sunrise. There's people playing volleyball, there's people surfing, there's boot camp. Everybody's out and about, it's just normal. It's a far cry from the life Claire left behind. My weekends revolved around going to the pub. You know, Saturday I'd be in the pub by midday watching a football game and then just stay there all day and night. You know, some days I wouldn't even leave my apartment if it was raining, you know, and I had a hangover. So it was a very different lifestyle. Claire's main group of friends are also from the UK. They plan weekend trips around sporting events that they're competing in. A lot of people in London are just sort of really into the sort of the drinking scene and the nightlife scene in London. And so, like, doing sport becomes second to that, whereas we largely chill out, hang out as a group of mates, yeah, but also do a triathlon. And there's quite a lot of hot guys who do these things as well, which is an added bonus. Men are like craft. Triathlon became an Olympic event at the Sydney 2000 Games and has since seen a massive increase in popularity. Claire and her friends have spent the last four months training for the Jarvis Bay Triathlon, just one week away. The first leg is an ocean swim in the South Pacific, which holds its own challenges for Claire. <laughs> All I can think about is sharks when I get left behind. It's always in the back of your mind that they might be sharks. That's one thing that scares me as well. But when there's hundreds of people, you know, it's unlikely. If you stay in the middle, hopefully Mr Chompy won't get you. <laughs> Since records began, there has been a total of 884 shark attacks in Australia. But statistically, you're more likely to be killed driving to the beach than by being eaten by a shark. And spots such as the world-famous Bondi remain as popular as ever. Alex and Grace and their toddler Lenny live just five minutes from the beach. Days like this, the water's clear, and it almost looks like the Caribbean. It's perfect. <sighs> Came here on holiday and stayed. Like many Brits, Alex and Grace moved to Australia on a one year work visa. But nine years later, they're still here. During the week, they work in Sydney's central business district. But come the weekend, it's a different story. I'm a beach girl. Alex is a beach boy. We, we like the sunshine, we like being in the water, we're active. Yeah, and I think that's the best of both worlds, isn't it? It's, it's like, you know, you get to be on a holiday every weekend, still do your corporate job and earn good money. It's great. And the beach isn't Bondi's only attraction for Alex. When he's not there, he can normally be found doing lengths at his local swimming club. The Aussie lifestyle has had a great effect on Alex. I definitely became a happier person living here, I think, and a, and a lot more chilled out. I was, uh, you know, had a, ugh, not a great childhood, and my dad died when I was 17, and, yeah, things were quite rough in my 20s, and I was uh, a bit of an angry man, and one of the reasons I did come away was to get away from everything, and it's definitely, definitely calmed me down and made me a nicer person, I think. Despite their idyllic life in the sun, after nine years in Sydney, Alex and Grace have made a life-changing decision. Okay, in the car, honey. There's not much space. In ten days, we're flying home back to the UK. How are we going to get there? We're going to go on the uh, aeroplane, yeah? Then what's it going to be like in England? Cold. Uh, you're going to have lots of puddles to jump in? Yeah. This is number two, he's actually having a massive kick at the moment. 
So I'm five months, five months now, and this is a big reason for the change. I really feel like I'm taking Lenny away from grandparents. So I feel a bit selfish that they don't get to be a part of his life. And we never get a break. And when we do have lots of friends, but it's not the same as having family. Being closer to family isn't the only motive for going home. Sales manager Alex has professional reasons too. There's been an increasing fear over the last 12, 18 months of treading water. Australia is still the continent at the end of the world. If you're a big organisation, you're, you're not going to launch your super whiz-bang new product in, in this country. The next 10 years need to be in the UK and, and, and being focused on that professional life. And, you know, and there are things we're going to have to sacrifice and give up. We're not leaving because we hate it. We love it. That's why it's difficult. Tonight is Alex and Grace's leaving drinks overlooking their beloved Bondi Beach. And saying goodbye isn't easy. I'm going to miss you, mate, so much. I'm going to miss you too. This is it now, isn't it? I didn't it's like know, I last night to see a lot of people. Yeah. You're seven kilometres from the city centre and you've got this pristine, beautiful beach, fantastic waves. They're mad! <laughs> I'm sure Alex is looking at this thinking, yeah, Bondi's it is best in the late evening when the sun's going down like this. Look, you got you got decent waves there, you got the surfers, you got the boogie board guys. You're gonna put me off going home soon because <laughs> there, there's really no more than a man or a woman wants than than this lifestyle. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We're really good friends. It's like my best mate. So it's leaving a whole life behind, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? So and so like that. Some Brits moved to Australia for opportunities they'd never get at home. Eleven years ago, Gary came to visit his older brother who lived in Sydney and was enchanted by what he found. With the wildlife, it's just, it's the be all and end all of my existence. In Australia, it's so sparsely populated that the opportunity to interact with animals is still there. Gary grew up in Whitehaven in the Lake District and is one of three brothers. He trained as an electrician and on a night shift 12 years ago, he made a shock decision. It was a freezing cold November night. My hands wouldn't work because it was so cold and I just thought to myself, that's it. I can't do this anymore. I've got to, there's got to be something else that I can, I can go and do somewhere else. You know? Here we go again. Gary speaking. Now you understand you had a bit of an encounter last night and you've, uh, you've got a snare for me to pick up, is that correct? Gary still earns his living as an electrician, but in his free time he works with wires of a different kind. The Wildlife Information Rescue and Education Service, who rescue and care for endangered wildlife. Today Gary's been called out to a family 18 miles away in the Sydney suburb of Bayview. Oh, look at this place, eh? <laughs> so you've got a snake? daughter was up in the bathroom, just sat on the toilet and looked down and this is the snake. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. He's probably half asleep, I don't know. And what we've got there is a little venomous brown tree snake. Oh, brown tree snake. Yeah. The 11 most poisonous land snakes live in Australia and there's around 3,000 snake bites every year. It's been a little bit bashed up, I think. When my daughter was having a shower, she turned the heat light on with a fan. Yeah. And, um, oh, okay. he, and he must have got hot and jumped out, you know, slid out through the... Um, right got a little bit burnt from the heat lamp. Brown tree snakes are notorious for their bad temper. They're venomous, but their venom is not strong enough to cause an adult human a problem. Most people with an accent like yours would be horrified at snakes. Yeah, we've got a couple of species of snake, but certainly nothing as, uh, no, nothing as kind as of interesting or, uh, yeah, as we get out here. Mm. Yeah. What I'll do with him as well, just because he's got those little injuries there, um, I'll take him into care, okay. uh, give him a, a good feed. Despite all that Australia has to offer, one in five Brits eventually returns home. He's picking up. And we're going better in green we dies. And in just a few days, Alex and Grace are swapping their two-bedroom Bondi apartment with a balcony for a one-bedroom flat in Brighton. Had it up to here with packing. Been carrying these all day 
and it's just gone on and on and on. Cheers. Oh, some air. With their belongings now heading back to the UK, Alex is starting to realise what he's leaving behind. Bondi is very much its own, own little world. You've got everything from your amazingly cool and trendy people to writers to, to gay people to gangsters to that whole kind of mix of people that makes somewhere quite interesting. I've loved every minute of living here and definitely have a... Have a, uh, sorry, excuse me. Have a 2026 on a heart somewhere for the postcode. I just really, really love it. <sighs> yeah. Oh, honey. I've never seen you cry before, ever. Ever. Now we are offering you the chance to spend 14 nights in fantastic Sydney, courtesy of Oz Travel and Etihad Airways. One lucky winner and three guests will cruise the famous Sydney Harbour landmarks, explore the beautiful Blue Mountains, get up close to some of Australia's local wildlife and relax on gorgeous golden beaches. With your choice of luxury beachside accommodation or vibrant city apartment, plus an amazing £5,000 spending money. For your chance to win, answer the following question correctly. What's the name of the world's largest barrier reef located off the coast of Australia? A. The Little Barrier Reef B. The Great Barrier Reef C. The Giant Barrier Reef Call 0901 123. Calls should cost no more than £1.3 pence from BT Landlines. Other networks may be higher and mobiles considerably more. Text your answer A, B or C to 8844. Text cost £1 plus one standard network rate message. You can also enter for free at itv.com. Entrance must be 18 or over. Date restrictions will apply. Entries made after lines close at 10am on Saturday the 2nd of June will not be counted but may still be charged. Good luck. Australia has some of the most extraordinary animals on the planet and the wildlife is a huge attraction for some Brits. 38-year-old Gary moved to Sydney from the Lake District 11 years ago to interact with the native wildlife and he shares his central one-bedroom flat with some unusual housemates. The lounge is just to the right there and this is the, the reptile centre in any usual run-of-the-mill person's house, this would be the dining area. I mean, I keep some of the most toxic and venomous animals on Earth right here. There are roughly 150 species of snake in Australia, and Gary's housing one of the most venomous, the eastern brown snake. So just be careful, I'll get you to stand back just a little bit while I'm doing this. If not treated quickly, a bite from this snake can be fatal. A lot of people would view that as aggression. That's active defence, I think. He's cornered, he's in a, a tight space and there's something a hundred times his body weight standing right in front of him. Gary's snakes are not pets. He houses up to 18 as part of his work with Wires Rescue Agency. So this is the common death adder. And this, for me, was my introduction to venomous Australian snakes. The fastest striking snake in Australia. Hey, come on, cheeky. One of his recently rescued snakes is on the mend. This is the little brown tree snake that we picked up from Bearview on our rescues last week. As you can see, he's slightly more lively these days than he was last week. He's had three little baby mice. You see right in the middle of his belly there, you get a little lump that he's dinner from last night. If the tree snake keeps making progress, he'll soon be ready to be released. Thirty-seven-year-old Claire left London seven years ago for a more active life in Australia. It's 6 a.m. and with the Jarvis Bay Triathlon in a couple of hours, Claire is making final preparations. I'm not feeling... I feel fine. Like, I know I can do it, but I want to do the time that I, I have as my goal, and I don't know if I'm going to do that, but hopefully I will. There's over 80 triathletes taking part, and it's Claire's second-ever triathlon, which consists of a swim, a bike ride, and a run. And the first leg is the most challenging for Claire. It's the dreaded ocean swim. A little bit nervous about the swim, but oh, I should be okay. 
Mrs. Chompy doesn't get me. Ladies, one minute. One minute. Six. Oh my God. And we've been working towards this triathlon for about four months now. I've been riding and swimming and running, and now I can put it all together and actually see how, how well I can do. It's an overcast morning in Jarvis Bay, but it's hot and humid. She's finished the swim, but Claire's still got to complete the 12-mile bike ride and the three-mile run. Keen to come in under one hour 30 minutes, it's a sprint finish. It's done now. Relax. Claire finished in one hour 28 minutes and 13 seconds, beating her target. It's given me more energy being in Australia. I've got a lot more get up and go. I can fit a lot more into my day. I spend a lot of time on the couch in London and I hardly ever see my couch here in Australia. I wouldn't sacrifice this lifestyle for anything. You know, I, I'm so happy here. It's been the, the best move of my life. With a few hours before their flight, there's time for one last dip in the ocean for Alex, Grace and their toddler, Lenny. With a second child on the way and limited career opportunities for Alex, they've made the difficult decision to move back home. Oh, it's just beautiful in there. I'm really going to miss it. I think we'll leave part of our hearts here, won't we? Big part. Well, bye bye Bondi. It's time to start their 20-hour journey back to the UK. See ya. But how will their new life compare to the Bondi Beach paradise they've left behind? Oh. A few miles across the city, there's another homecoming, and it's a risky business. So this is our eastern brown snake. Easily have enough venom to kill all three of us. It's time for Gary to release his snakes, including the eastern brown and he'll need all of his experience to avoid being bitten. Beautiful big snake, big pussycat. The Kurringai National Park is 15 miles north of Sydney and with around 60 square miles of dense vegetation, it's a perfect habitat for snakes. There's plenty of cover here so they don't get aerial attacks. So this is perfect environment for them. Gary's found the ideal spot to release the rescued brown tree snake. What we want to do here is try and get him into that old tree there so he's got somewhere to shelter until it gets dark. Beautiful little critter. The perfect release for a little um, nocturnal somewhere. But he'll be in far less uh, danger of being picked up by any of the birds. One of the Australianisms is that the only good snake is a dead snake. We're looking at animals that have evolved in such a fantastic way over millions of years. To just write them off like that is just completely wrong. In some parts of Australia, there can be as many as 300 snakes per kilometre. But deep in Sydney's bush, Gary has come across two of his very own fellow species. Yeah, how are you? Where do you come from in England? I'm from the, the Lake District. Oh, yes. yeah? Yeah, just on a... Uh, we're high on wine. I've actually got a big eastern brown snake to release today. Yeah, big six foot one. Oh, really? It's okay. What I want to know is what a pom is doing looking after snakes and... It's just kind of a wildlife nut. So the eastern brown snake, which is the second most toxically venomous land snake on Earth, A calm manner and steady hand are essential when releasing such a deadly snake. So we're going to take him over here 
and let him go. Beautiful big snake. He's angry, as he should be. Gary's eight years of wildlife experience has paid off. And off he goes, doing his thing. <laughs> there are opportunities that have opened up to me that I probably never would have had in the UK. It's fantastic to learn what's going back in the world. Another one for the, uh, the history books, I guess. <laughs> Back in the UK, it's a crisp February morning, and Alex, Grace, and Lenny are adjusting to their new life in Brighton. I love it. Yay. It's different. I mean, we can't compare it, obviously, but I just love this beach. I love throwing stones in the water. I can sit for hours. I love the sound of the pebbles as the sea moves back over it. I, no, I love it. I love it. It's just yeah. it's different. I think if you're born if you're born here and it's in your blood, it's what I grew up with and. You know, some people might think we're mad, you know. Lenny won't have the opportunity now to grow up as a surf bum on Bondi Beach, but I think for, for culture, for, for education, and for, a, you know, the opportunity to grow up with his family and have all that support, I think we've, you know, really made, made the, the right, right choice. Yeah, made Definitely. the right move. Don't, I don't regret it one bit. Next time, okay, you first. we meet Liverpudlian Lisa, who's adapted to the Aussie way. Both my little Aussie children, if we might just have yeah. a wander. Thank you. We'll follow Yvonne, who's shopping for houses in the harbour. It's open to offers, so it'll probably, I would say, go for around four million. And we'll join Welshman Leon, whose travels have landed him on top of the world. Hot tubbing under the harbour bridge.